Oh, hey, fellas. I didn't see you there. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm retarded. Anyway, let me show you what I've been working on. Uh, I got I got a, a message from a, from a fellow YouTuber last week after I'd posted uh, my last video and and he was I forgot which plane he was oh he was he was looking at watching my B17 uh, video and he was doing one in a natural metal finish and he did it with uh, uh, bare metal foil and he sent me some pictures and it looked incredible and although I'm not uh, I'm not one for doing an entire plane with with bare metal foil just because I don't think that I have the skills to do that. Um, but I have done probably a dozen or so uh, natural metal finishes using like um, Alclads and uh, Extreme Metal. I really like AK's Extreme Metal products. But anyway, it got me uh, motivated to do my Tamiya 132nd scale P51, uh, which would be a natural metal finish. And so I started that last week and I got it done yesterday and uh, kind of wanted to show you the finished plane. So let's take a look at it. Here's the finished Mustang, and I'm pretty proud of the base. The uh, I had a hard time coming up with an idea of what I wanted to do with the base, and I had done some previously with like the Stars and Bars logo and some rivets, and I tried it with this one, and I just didn't like the way it looked, so I scrapped that idea, and, and yesterday morning I, I was perusing through some on the interwebs trying to get some ideas and uh, came across some some old buy war bonds posters from World War II and I really liked the way they looked and uh, you know and, and some of them had this nice weathering effect on them so what I did is I, uh, I I used my Photoshop program and I found a flag picture threw it in there and then created the wording around it and uh, and made a mask with my my vinyl cutter and and this is what I came up with the the staining was all done with uh, sepia ink and water and I just after I got it all painted my base paint colors down I just took some uh, sepia ink with mixed with water and splashed it on there and it came up with these this nice staining pattern and then I went around with some some NATO black and some browns and yellows and kind of uh, dirtied it up and weathered it up, and and I really like the way it way it looks, and it's it's fitting with this with the plane and how I have it weathered. Um, I really like doing this part of it. I mean, I like doing the I like I like modeling in, in general, but I really like creating, and and this is what I consider like it like an art piece. Um, some some may say it's not <laughs> very good art, but. Uh, you know, I, I think it's I think it's a cool piece, and and this is kind of what I strive for when I when I build a model is just to have something that that's uh, that's appealing, and and this is appealing to me. Um, when I when I before I got into modeling in my previous life, I used to do um, pop art posters or pop art prints, and how I would do that is I would take those are those are two of the first ones I've, I I did. What I would do is I'd take poster board and I would draw draw out a, uh, a like stencil, something that I found off online or some reference, and then I would create these multi-layer stencils and then spray paint canvases using the stencils, and, and I came up with that. And it was kind of time consuming, but I enjoyed it, and uh, and so that's kind of where I got my my flair for for art doing those things. But anyway. The uh, the plane itself, you know, the, the kit, I was a little under-impressed. It's a great kit, but uh, having done the Tamiya Corsair and the Tamiya 148 uh, F-14 Tomcat, this one didn't seem to go together quite as well. I mean, there weren't, there weren't really any big issues that I can speak of. It's just the, the fit and the engineering I just don't think is... It's better than anything else out there, but I just don't think the engineering was quite as well done as what those kits were. But overall, I mean, it was a good kit. The the natural metal finish will hit that first. What I do with my natural metal finishes, and, and like I said before, I've done a dozen or so of them. 
I start off with a base layer of GX2. You can see that back there, Mr. Hobby GX2. And it's a, it's a real gloss black. And I put a 50-50 mix of that and Mr. Color, Color Level, Leveling Thinner on there. And then I'll come back and I'll keep diluting it until I got mostly Mr. Color Leveling Thinner on there and again it creates a real shiny finish. I didn't buff it or, or try to do a, a super high shine. I didn't buff or sand or anything because I knew I was going to weather this. Um, but I've seen other people, they buff it and it, and it looks almost like glass. Uh, then after that what I did is I took some NATO black and I don't know if the, the camera will pick it up. The pictures I'm going to show here in a little bit will. But I did like a marbling layer with NATO black. Because if you look at if you look at um, weathered aluminum, it, it's not all one shiny piece of aluminum. It's there's there's variations in the tone and the and the almost like the shininess. Uh, you might be able to pick some up. Focus camera. You can kind of see how the tone is varied. And what that is, it's a marbling coat with a NATO black. Then what I did is I went, I sprayed um, a few coats of al light coats of alclad al chrome, and those that marbling layer really shows through. Then what I did is I took some AK Extreme Metal Aluminum, and then kind of went in and and toned it down a little bit more. So I and 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 that way I because the way I had it with the chrome, it was just too much. So the AK uh, Extreme Metal Aluminum toned it down. Then I went through and, and like the, the gun doors right there and over here and on the, uh, the tail fin here and a couple different areas. I masked those off and painted them with uh, dark aluminum. Um, I think I did this flap in like a Dura Aluminum and a couple other places, but... Um, I also did the stainless steel plate, plate or the steel plate or whatever they use for this. And I made it a little bit more pronounced than what I've seen in pictures just because I wanted that to stand out. That's dark aluminum. And then I took some blue, um, send me a clear blue, some clear reds, some clear oranges, and to me a smoke. And I was able to get that like heat staining worn steel effect. Uh, another thing that I did, which I'm going to employ on my future builds, um, is where the wing root here, it looks like nice, worn, dirty aluminum. How I did that was I masked off the, that portion of the wing right along, right along here. And then I took my masking fluid and with a sponge and I just sponged in the mask, masking fluid along this wing root. Um, then what I took is like a dark aluminum. I might even have went darker. I might have went with like a metallic smoke or something. And I just sprayed over that. And then when I lift the masking up, it gives you that nice chipped, uh, worn aluminum finish right there. And I really like how that turned out. Um, all the, the lettering except for that, the, the tail fin's a decal from Warbird decals. And so isn't the... Um, the nose art, that's all, those are decals from um, Warbird. Oh, and the uh, the pilot, Lieutenant Martin decal. Uh, but everything else is painted on or wet transfer. Like these little stencils are all wet transfers. They're, um, they're not as easy to work with, in my opinion, as decals, but obviously they, there's no carrier film, so they do, they do give a, a little bit better of a look. The, Stars and bars insignia, those letters, the um, the checkerboard pattern, and let's see what else. Oh, the rest of it's all painted. That I painted all those on, so there's no decal film to mess with. There's no trying to get them to suck down into rivets, and uh, I think that's the way I'm going to do it from now on, if at all possible, is uh, paint what I can paint on. The um, what else do we got? Um, this to me a kit, there's a lot of bells and whistles, the landing gear, you can have it up or down um, and interchange it. And that's just, for a static model, that's really nothing that I concern myself with. I closed up the landing gear. You can see that. 
But anyway, I closed up the landing gear, so um, I didn't even mess with any of that kind of crap. I did do some weathering along the bottom. Got some sp splash marks on there where the wheels would have splashed up dirt and stuff. And you can kind of see that marbling coat underneath. Underneath the plane's a little bit more prominent the way the light is showing. But um, The interior, I was going to put a pilot, but uh, I thought about putting a pilot. I wasn't going to put a pilot in there. So I did my, my scratch built. Uh, seat belts and then I added a scratch built uh, pad back there like a, a flotation pad and uh, I did that with that uh, epoxy putty and our magic sculpt and that turned out really well and I didn't want to cover that up with a pilot so I left it left it pilotless if there's anything else I can think of uh, then just basically oil oil work I didn't do a whole lot of oil work just around here. I did the panel lines with like a dark dark black panel line wash. And uh, it's not real significant, but it's there. The um, Just used some browns and some smoke colored stuff for the, for the oil, oil painting. And a uh, little bit of streaking with some engine grime grease type oil paint colors. But, uh, yeah, that's it. This is the finished P-51 Mustang. And I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's a pretty cool display piece. I'm debating on whether to keep it or to put it on eBay. Uh, with, I don't know, for me, the like I've said before in my other videos, for me, the fun is in, in actually building it and creating something. So, you know, if somebody else can get some use out of it and, and I can get some more money to buy more models, then, you know... Hey, it works for me, so I'll probably throw it on eBay. But anyway, here's some pictures, and uh, thanks for watching.